Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab. I hope you're all doing okay out there right now. And uh, today I will be having a little bit of a talk, maybe even a bit of a ramble about the announcement from Intel yesterday, specifically its new product roadmap, which looks to be very, very aggressive over the next few years and is particularly exciting to PC enthusiasts. So basically what happened yesterday is Intel laid out its plans for the next few years. And as I mentioned, the roadmap for the new products and process nodes that it will be releasing look particularly interesting and aggressive, but in addition to the new technologies that were announced, I'm not gonna to go too much into those today because there's a whole bunch of information out there and I've also linked to Intel's very, very good uh, announcement about these products with its uh, CEO and uh, other people talking about the new technologies and what you can expect from each process node which is gonna be launched and there's a new naming scheme for those as well and you can see all of that in the, uh, in the video from Intel. Now though, I wanted to talk about two things that were very, very interesting and stuck out at me that were basically mentioned by the CEO, Pat Gelsinger, at the end of the presentation. And these are things that I haven't really heard Intel say before, and not a lot of other people seemingly have actually picked up on those things either. So the first one that I wanted to talk about is the fact that Pat said Intel is back, that his own words, Intel is back. And that is a very, very interesting statement because obviously it implies that Intel hasn't sort of been there for, for the last few years, obviously it has been, but that to me implies that it's aware that it hasn't been particularly a, a, a competitive against AMD. Um, it's aware that it hasn't been particularly innovative with regards to that either. And it hasn't been there maybe even you know, admitting to itself where it's not performing as, as it should and it's not in, innovating like it should. And, you know, we, we kind of want that from Intel. You know, in, AMD is the underdog. <laughs> it's the underdog here. It shouldn't be, you know, trouncing the, uh, you know, the big, uh, the big guy in this, ta in, 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 in this sense, Intel, the blue team, you know, they, they should always have a lead and AMD has really stolen a march on them. And I think that, statement from Pat was very, very interesting because Intel practically never admits that it should have done better. It practically never admits that it's in second place. And I know that from my own personal experience as well, having interviewed people at AMD, uh, AMD, have interviewed people at AMD as well. That was gonna be the next thing I was gonna talk about. Having interviewed people at Intel, that they're very tight-lipped in general. I mean, I've spoken to engineers over in Intel in person when I went out there to visit the uh, the fab a couple of years ago before the pandemic. Absolutely fantastic trip, and um, yeah, just some of the some of the behind-the-scenes stuff was just absolutely crazy. And you had to think, you know, with these huge buildings and billions of dollars in, of investment, how has it sort of come to this? You know. And uh, I spoke to someone around the ninth gen launch when I was in New York as well, and that was one of the sort of the, one of the driest interviews I've ever done. In that they just you know kind of refused to admit that there was competition. They refused to admit that AMD was actually doing pretty well, and you know the the launches were just you know just very repetitive. There was no kind of forward motion in terms of manufacturing process. Uh, we went for an absolute age without a particularly new architecture and all that kind of stuff. And it's it's just not what you expect from a company like Intel. But on the, flip, on the flip side of that with AMD, they've been very forthcoming in interviews. If you remember the interview, you might have seen it or that I wrote on Forbes. I spoke to people way up in AMD that uh, such as uh, Jim Anderson that were very open in terms of the their roadmap and their plans for the future and where Ryzen and in particular Threadripper had actually come from. And I remember Jim Anderson admitting to me that Threadripper didn't even have a business plan. <laughs> and um, I was just like, what? And when we were talking about it, it basically boiled down to the fact that there was no plan for Threadripper initially. It was a skunkworks project that was kind of born out of the AMD's bowels um, with some engineers that were working on it in their spare time. And that kind of changed from 
something that AMD and Jim Anderson was actually quite concerned about after he'd said that and they were <laughs> a bit wary of me actually putting that in the interview that I wrote on Forbes and I can highly recommend that you read that as well it's really fascinating I'll put a look in I'll put a link to it in the description below and what really struck me about that is how open AMD was about it. They were, you know, holding their hands up saying, you know, we're the underdog here, this is how we roll and we're being innovative and we're taking chances and we're taking risks maybe. But with Threadripper especially, the, the fact that it didn't have a business plan kind of just, that really strikes me as particularly innovative and being very open and nurturing to that that innovation really because Threadripper kind of came out of nowhere no one really had predicted it there were no rumors around uh, about performance which we obviously were used to that kind of thing now there was just nothing it came out of nowhere and was ultimately very very successful you know first of all it started um, undercutting Intel in terms of getting uh, the number of cores that you get for your cache they started ramping up the uh, the IPC and the performance that you'd see per core and then Obviously, Intel had to react to that, and one of the things it did was to hack and slash at, its, at the prices of its high-end of its equivalent high-end desktop processors, and it's kind of culminated now with the 24 and 32, 32 core, and indeed 64 core Threadripper parts. Intel doesn't really have an equivalent on the desktop. You know, if you want a really really good CPU on a desktop rather than a workstation motherboard, you would go for Threadripper, something like the 5960X. 24 cores is a fantastic CPU for the money. And if I was building a dedicated video uh, video editing rig or something like that, uh, that, that is the CPU I would, I would probably go for, especially if you're using something that's more CPU core intensive in terms of video edi editing applications. So the, the fact that AMD has always been very open about that has I'm not sure what it did for its share price when they when they learned about that, but certainly from an enthusiast point of view, that's what that won them a lot of fans, and that's what I want to see more from Intel is them drawing the line in that in that in that lack of innovation and the criticism that it's received over the last few years. Draw a line under that and just start being a bit more open about what you're planning on doing, being more open to your to your fans, because ultimately they, they, Intel does still have a lot of fans in the PC enthusiast arena. Um, I'm one of them. And it's it's just something that I want to see more from them. I want to hear more, hear more about this. And the fact that it was very, the product map was, uh, roadmap was very, very aggressive. We're looking at one launch pretty much every single year in terms of the new, uh, the, the new process nodes and the new, the, the new architectures that are coming, new transistor architecture as well, which is really, really exciting. And what we want to see is them, you know, stick to this roadmap, not let deadlines and launches, you know, be delayed like they have with, with 10 nanometer, which is well overdue now on the, on the desktop. So, it's things like that, that that kind of knock the PC enthusiasts because we like planning ahead. We, we want to upgrade our PCs and that kind of stuff for the latest games and content creation and all sorts of other things, streaming as well. But when we're disappointed like that, it does nothing for your reputation, especially amongst PC enthusiasts. And that's an area that AMD has really has stolen a march on as well as the performance area. It's gained a lot of fans because it has stuck to those launches. It has been innovative. We've got more cores. We've got more performance overall, and we're seeing you know those uh, we're seeing better power efficiency, and we're seeing smaller uh, manufacturing processes, and that kind of stuff. And that's what got me really excited um, about Intel's announcement yesterday that they were admitting you know hands up. We've not been there where, or we've not been where we should over the last few years, but we are back. And that for me was really, really exciting. Um, probably the most exciting statement, even with considering all the fantastic technological advances that it's planning on introducing over the next few years, that for me was probably the most exciting statement of, of everything. The fact that they were holding their hands up and admitting that they've not been where they should have been over the last few years, but they will be in future. And here is our our product roadmap to prove it. So obviously a lot depends on them sticking to that, but I think given um, that so many people are involved and there's a lot of investment that's already gone on behind the scenes, a lot of the technology and the processes that, that they're using are already out there as well and being used by other companies. So that for me was a really, really interesting statement. So. The next statement that was again pretty much at the tail end of uh, Pat's talk was the fact that it aims to 
not just match AMD by 2025, it is aiming to better it. And for me, that feels, that feels like a very big statement because that to me suggests that it is looking to have better if power efficiency than AMD, it's aiming to have better multi-threaded performance than AMD, and it's going to have better single and lightly threaded performance than AMD as well. I think we would expect nothing less from Intel at this point, and we've already seen small rumors of that with um, the 12900K leak that came out recently. Whether or not you wanna believe that is, uh, is another matter, but the fact that it's first hybrid CPU with hybrid cores, big cores and little cores, the, fir uh, the first 16 core iteration of that, the Core i9-12900K seems to be beating AMD's 16 core, admittedly a very old Zen 3 part, is still very, very interesting. And that for me is kind of that line. It's drawn a line in the sand saying, right, this far, no further, we're gonna move on from here and we're gonna be, and we're back basically. So now four years might seem like quite a long time, but we are looking at a product launch pretty much every single year from Intel, moving from those, those different named nodes like Intel 7 and Intel 4. And again, you can see the full lowdown and description of that in my Forbes article, which you can, uh, which you can see a link to below, as well as the Intel video, which I also highly recommend you watch. And moving forward through those, I won't go into, into any technical detail with that because that's not why I'm here today. It needs to do this with AMD because AMD has got its own technologies coming forward, such as the uh, the 3D cache stacking and all that kind of stuff. So we are gonna see significant performance improvements from AMD over the next few years. So Intel has to be more aggressive in terms of what it is gonna do over the next few years to just, even just to match AMD, never mind actually better it. So the fact that Intel has set a goal for just four years time of actually getting ahead of AMD means that the next few years are gonna be very, very exciting in terms of the CPU wars. So we saw a lot of competition over the last three or four years since uh, AMD introduced Ryzen back in 2017. And really Intel has, been on the back foot there. You know, it's done some pretty unpopular moves such as just cutting prices of certain products and, you know, rehashing other ones. And it still hasn't really, you know, had a major product launch on the desktop on 10 nanometer either. So that's something that we're still waiting for. Um, but I think this is kind of the company drawing a line, as I've already mentioned, and saying, right, this is our product roadmap. We're gonna to stick to it. We've got these new technologies coming on board and by 2025, we will be ahead of AMD. And again, getting back to Pat's original statement, the fact that Intel is back is admitting that until now, it hasn't really been going for the jugular and you know coming up with innovative technologies that are going to allow it to compete with AMD on a on an equal footing across the board, not just in single threaded stuff. We know that Intel has consistently been very good there. Yeah, AMD has pipped it to the post a little bit, um, especially with Zen 3. But overall, AMD, especially with Zen 3, has been a force to be reckoned with. And obviously it has that multi-threaded clout to go with it as well, which Intel simply cannot match, especially when it comes to CPUs such as the Ryzen 9 5900X and the 5950X. So, for me, yesterday's presentation really boiled down to those two statements. Yes, we've got a whole load of fantastic technology coming online. We've got this very aggressive product roadmap and we've got new, a new tran transistor architecture uh, coming on uh, online, which will, by the time it's released in a couple of years, it will be well over 10 years since we've had a new transistor architecture from Intel as well. So. For me though, as I've mentioned, those two statements from Pat are probably the takeaway things for me. Uh, the fact that it's holding its hands up, it's saying we haven't been there the last few years, but we are back, we are innovating, and we have an aggressive launch schedule that is looking to topple AMD in terms of performance. That's super, super exciting, and it's looking to do that by 2025, and we have a whole bunch of new products to look forward to. We have a very aggressive CPU war that is hotting up, starting with AMD's next launch and also with Intel's Alder Lake, which is gonna bring those hybrid CPU cores by the end of 2021. So, super, super exciting times. I 
want to thank you for watching and of course do subscribe to this channel and like this video like comment subscribe all that kind of stuff and i would love for you to comment actually let me know what you think about intel's plans um this isn't me blowing smoke in their nether regions this is me being genuinely excited about this product announcement and this isn't me being an intel fanboy either you know i review these products for a living you can look at my my reviews of my uh, of amd products my pc over there has got an amd processor in it for now so that's that's why I'm here, is to get excited about this stuff, and I genuinely am interested in hearing what you think about this as well. So don't forget to comment in the, in the comment section below. So thanks for watching, exciting times, and I will be back soon.